What's going on YouTube? This your boy King Gabe. And this is Queen Tina. And we are back with season two of Royal Talk. And it is, let's just say we're getting off to a royal start. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because we're talking about the Black Panther movie. <laughs> because he never flees. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you probably and a lot of you probably can guess already guess why we would pick this movie to start off season uh two just so have to start season two off with. Because the sequel is on the on the way on Friday. From um the Friday from the day that we're recording this now. <laughs> so Yeah, um of course of course you of course you're probably still gonna uh you're probably still gonna view it for the first time before the movie come uh comes out there. <laughs> And yes, there will be a what I saw at the movie, uh, ably, you know, a little ably, non scripted review for that. They once come back from seeing it, you know, I'd be, hey, this is what I saw, <laughs> kind of thing there. So, yep, so figure, um, do this first before, uh, since I know obviously I'm going to be doing that for the sequel, uh, it would kind of make more sense. Um, if it wasn't, um, not saying it's a bad thing, but if but if it wasn't for the sequel coming out at the time that it's coming out, um, the original plan was to start off season two with the Jim Carrey Grinch. <laughs> so, so that but um, but we will be coming to that though. Yeah, we'll come to that there. So, um, so you will still see that a little bit later. Um, yep. So, but as of now. Go to the Black Panther, the MCU. Yep. As you can see, you got the Black Panther figure. <laughs> no, I've reviewed him uh, back in February. Um, I think right after, I think not too long after Valentine's, after I reviewed Silverbone and Black Arachnia. Um, sort of a Black History toy review. <laughs> yep. And, uh, of course, rest in peace to chat with Boswick. Um, there's a lot of people that they're not mad about the movie coming out. Uh, they're they're actually excited to see it. Um, but a lot of them have somewhat of a constructive criticism toward the release date. They feel like it's this is supposed to be the month of Chadwick Boseman's birthday, and they feel like if they were you know really like you know do like a go all out with honoring him, they would put it out on his birthday. Um, which, from what I remember, is not too far from Thanksgiving. Which, okay, I could see from their point. That's not not to down them for thinking that. I mean, okay, you know, I mean, if I if I made a movie, yeah, it would be nice to have it out on my birthday, you know, March thirty first. Yeah, just or if I was starring in a movie like he did, you know, I kind of would want that too. But um, but then you know, kind of think. The time, since that's right close around Thanksgiving, I kind of feel like it's better where it's at because the closer you get to Thanksgiving, the more people are going to be getting ready, you know, turkey with their family. You got some people that will go out to the movies on holidays, don't get me wrong, but I feel like you're going to have a bigger audience. I feel like there'll be a bigger audience, you know, around this time as opposed to getting close to Thanksgiving. <laughs> Yeah, because then um, a lot of the people that's going to be sitting down for Thanksgiving dinner and getting the turkey ready, those people are probably going to go on and see this movie once it comes out Friday. <laughs> what I was about to say is, do you know when when, when was his actual birthday? Um, he said it's like I, getting close to Thanksgiving. Yeah, let me, uh, I think like 20 of something there. Heck, it wouldn't and, uh, surprise me if he was born on the same day as me. Well, actually, because I know yours is the 21st, his is the 29th. Oh, the 29th, so it's after Thanksgiving. Yeah, um, yes, the, so, yeah, people were saying, some people were saying that it uh, would, would have been better release um, on Thanksgiving. Well, maybe the, um... Yeah, maybe if they had held it back, yeah, that would actually. I mean, we still go. We're still gonna go see it. You know, they doing. You know, Marshall's doing what they're doing. But yeah, if it's after Thanksgiving, then you know, people then 
had the turkey and leftovers and digested and did the little uh, pre-Christmas shopping at the day after Thanksgiving. So, yeah, maybe, th yeah, they probably would go out and see Black Panther. It's only Tuesday, but, yeah, <clears throat> that's not, a lot of people, that's not going to stop a lot of people, you know. <laughs> maybe it's a possibility that maybe after the movie's over, they might put in memory of the original Black Panther. I'm pretty sure they would. And matter of fact, the sequel is a, the sequel itself was supposed to be a memorial uh, to um, because of the fact that the at the actor passed there is also a memorial to um, the, to to Chala. To, yeah, to the character. Right, Chala. So yeah, it's supposed to be that he, which we'll find out the details. But yeah, it's supposed to be that. So that at some point after Endgame, he passed. Yeah. Um, maybe recently before the movie. It's like you're turning factual stories into fiction, and to fit into fiction in the fictional universe. Kind of like, um, kind of like what you and me do with a lot of our story. You know, we some some of the stuff that's facts with us, we uh, adapted into our stories. Into fiction. Yeah. Like I have a, vi a fictional version of Pasadena. Mm -hmm. With some of the buildings, and and also with um, you know, and also with your character Melissa, aka Bubbleina. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's um, something like that. And then, like with me, with Yamiko, it's uh, it's a mix between stuff that's happened to me and fictional past stories that I've um, you know kind of scribbled and stuff as you know as a kid, teenager, stuff like that. And put into a cohesive sort of like ducktail for this Disney Afternoon verse, hmm. <laughs> or the MC, or the MCU, which I think that's where Ducktales got that idea from. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Then again, Disney is pretty much in junction with Marvel, so that makes even more sense <laughs> that they sort of would kind of the right their writing styles would rub off on each other. <laughs> I think they go by assumption that T'Challa must have died during battle. Yeah, that's probably what's gonna, um, probably what it's gonna imply. Yep. Yeah. Um, and like I say, I I know there's nothing that you know. I mean, it you know that's kind of that kind of stuff just happens. Yeah. But yeah, if uh, if he was still alive, I just wonder would they still do the passing of the torch to Shuri? Like, maybe not in the second movie, like, maybe he would, you know, maybe it'd be him and Namor going at it, and then he would either, either the second or either the end of the third movie, like, um, or, um, would he have passed it to Shuri? It's pop. Um, one way I would have guessed he would have done if he was still alive is, maybe, you remember the girl, um, we're about to talk about, um, well, let's get into the to the movie, and it'll it'll make more sense to tell you after talking about the yeah. first movie. Yeah, because there's something in this first movie that I feel like would have made him pass it to Shuri if he was still alive. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but like I said, you know, we gotta have what we have because you know. Um, and to a lot of people that's complaining about, well, why y'all making such a big deal? You know that. You can't just get another person to play Chala, you know. What's what's the big deal? I mean, you did it for Edward Norton. <laughs> they just want they just want to respect his memory. Yeah, because um, one thing Edward Norton hadn't passed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two, um, yes, there and and yeah, I know we replaced Rhodey too at the beginning. <laughs> but see, there's a big difference in this case because there was so much they that uh, between the studio. Uh, the director and the and the person playing this character, uh, chat with Bozwick, yeah. that they've kind of gone through with each other. So yeah, it's sort of it's kind of a sentimental thing yeah. with uh, that, as well as also the fans too. Uh, a lot of the fans have gotten attached to this guy because they say, you know, with the colon cancer that was the cause of his death, he was fighting through that. When they first started shooting the Black Panther movie, not not Civil War when he first appeared, but when they first started with the Black Panther movie, yeah, he uh, was experiencing signs of it then, but he never really made it like out there known. He just went, you know, just like 
me going to my, my, my normal, uh, just going, somebody going to their normal work day. He did keep his colon cancer private, and during the last, I saw a few of the last photos before he passed. Let's just say he looked really sick, so sick that he looked anorexic, and he was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and some people think that he's doing that for a role, which is, which is not for a role, that's just reality. Yeah, and he probably, and he himself, like I say, the, another reason why, because he himself, he really believed he was going to be able to, you know, you know, whatever Marvel wanted him to, to do, you know, that, and, you know, the movies to come, that, okay, yeah, I just, you know, I get my treatments and stuff, and I'll, I'll be all right, you know. I believe he's a fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he had, he had strong, he had strong belief, you know, and like I say, that's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with you know being optimistic there you know because maybe because I mean for all he know he could have possibly got through that mm -hmm. but you know this I know there are people out there who has a cancer or some type of illness but they, they keep on fighting to stay alive yeah so they don't want pe other people to worry even their loved ones they just keep on fighting and I'm not gonna let this cancer or this disease or illness bring me down or even and even some who even some of them who may be on a limited time where okay there's like nothing that they can do about it and they're aware of it some of them will still keep themselves positive to you know just the fact of living out their last days to the fullest like a big happy family with the mother yes you know all she wanted just was to see Everybody together for one final dinner, you know, just, you know, have some time with all, with her whole family. It's sad that her whole family wasn't positive. They just bringing her, they just bringing the negative, the positivity down, the joy. Yeah, yeah and, and probably, and also the reason why she didn't say anything about the cancer until it happened, probably because, you know, obviously, you know, spending time with them, she wanted, you know, yeah, you know, be like a normal dinner, you know. Joking around, hey, how y'all doing? And stuff. Yeah, she didn't want the focus to be on. Oh my God, you're dying! Yeah. So maybe if I was her, I'd rather just tell them right away so they'll know. Think, think that would have probably been better, though. Yeah, just tell them right away so the family would know, so they would, so they would change. Yeah, I guess that that could possibly have had some effect on them. Yeah. And they would have, they would show respect to her. True. Yeah. But yeah, but but like I say, nothing, nothing, nothing against you know what you say, but you know yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people have a different perspective on how they approach that type of thing. You know, um, like I say, some of them think that maybe by doing that, maybe you know it would be. Maybe she felt like it would be hard to enjoy the family time, yeah. Cause everybody would have that on their mind. Like my mom was still like, "Oh no, she gonna die. She gonna die. She gonna die." Oh. Yeah, maybe she wanted them to be fully happy. You know, their last dinner, sort of. Yeah. Yes, I think that's how um, Chad with both and fell. He do, he want to keep his um, colon cancer a secret to his fans, so they don't so they don't worry, or or have concerns. I think he did tell his like his family about the colon cancer. Oh yeah, obviously. But not his fans. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I mean, the, they're close. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's and that's kind of going with what you what you said. Yeah, so he probably uh, yeah he probably had that idea. You had like, well, okay, at least you know my family can know with that. Yeah, because <laughs> they're gonna be the first ones to know. Should something happen, and he probably was like, hopefully it doesn't. But if something happened, at least they would be aware that. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did mention that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So. Yep. That um. Yeah, that's um kind of what uh. So yeah, that's kind of what to know after between this movie and that sequel of what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, between Endgame and the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. All I can say is wherever he is now, he's at. He found peace. Yeah. <laughs> wherever he is now. Mm. And um, uh, oh yeah, no, he's up. And to say, good Lord's, good Lord's got him up there with, let's say, with many of the others that you know, yeah, you know, got 
chilling up there. <laughs> I think he also met Kobe Bryant one time. Kobe Bryant. And they took a picture together. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Kobe there. Yeah. No Shaq missile. Yeah. Yeah. Shaq and his, and, and I know, I know obviously Kobe, but I'm talking about out, outside the family. I know Shaq was pretty close with him there. And I ride mm -hmm. Kobe and Shaq died at the same time, at the same year. They died in the same year. Oh, you said Shaq? Is I'm not, not Shaq. I mean Kobe and Chadwick Boseman oh, died I'm in the same saying. year. Oh, I'm about to say, I'm about to say, wait, I died. Shaq's not, Shaq's <laughs> not dead. He's still alive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Sorry about the miss. <laughs> Oops. The, the misunderstanding. Sorry about that. Don't, don't take, don't, don't take shake from us. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, not yet. I, I, I honestly would like to meet old Shaq because he said, uh, yeah. I want what he'd be like as an old man. Mm. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, just in general, I just, that, that's one of, I mean, there's a lot of other uh, celebrities I would like to meet, but that's one, that's one of the ones there. Hmm. Yeah, um, see, because, uh, <laughs> Yeah, remember when, when we did Brownie reactions, there was supposed to be a running gag of him popping up in some of the reaction videos, <laughs> doing random jobs uh, as sort of a reference to him in the infomercials. <laughs> like, but Shaq, you're delivering pizza? <laughs> well, yeah, I just thought I'd apply to be a pizza man. <laughs> I'm tired of you know, I need something to do. <laughs> Next, I'm supposed to be applying. And say, uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to be a judge. <laughs> yeah. All rise, the Honorable Judge Shaquille O'Neal presiding. <laughs> I know he also tried to be a cop too once. <laughs> which, uh, which honestly, I could believe that. Uh, tall as Shaq is, <laughs> I don't think anybody want to mess with him as a cop. <laughs> Yeah, you can say, yeah, person be trying to run away from the crime, he just picked them right up. <laughs> Where you think you're running? That's <laughs> it. All right, so, let's get the old Black Panther there. Um, funny, funny we mentioned Shaq there. <laughs> so, it starts off, they tell about the origin of Wakanda itself, which is really ironic considering that, you know, our sequel is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. <laughs> Almost reminds me of Mufasa telling Simba about the circle of life. Oh yeah, yeah, and Black Panther is uh, does reference a lot of the Lion King already. Since it took place in Africa. Matter of fact, um, just like Black Panther, a lot of the MCU movies have had references to Disney movies uh, leading up to this point. Uh, you know, because of the fact Disney, you know, over, you know, is working with Marvel. And like Age of Ultron reference to Pinocchio. <laughs> there are there are no strings on me. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so so we the origin of Wakanda and the first Black Panther. They talk about how there was a the meteorite of vibranium crashed to Earth. <laughs> five tribes settled on it. <laughs> there was a world amongst them, but one man received a special herb from the God ba uh, like the God Panther, um, ba uh, uh, Bail, uh, no, no, not Bail there, um, the, uh, Boss, Boss, Boss from the God Boss, and gave him superhuman strength and agility, and he became the first Black Panther. Well, then I think they gave him superpowers too. Well, strength and agility. I mean, that's a, that's powers in that. Are they going yeah. by real world logic? Yeah, but that's still somewhat fair. Yeah. I mean, super super strength and agility. Almost like what Captain America has, but uh, different. Yeah, and uh, yep, and then with the vibranium, then mixed with the vibranium, he get a cool cat suit. <laughs> <laughs> the cool cat suit with clothes and everything. <laughs> However, um, they mentioned that only four of the tribes, you know, was like, okay, yeah, we'll follow Black Panther. But fifth tribe was like, okay, you know, we we ain't gonna fight you guys, but you know, we we're gonna go off to ourselves. The uh, the road tribe, right? That led by the man ape there, uh, J uh, Jabba, uh, Jabba, 
when I, when I get to it, I'll pronounce it right. It, it's in my notes, but I, I, I don't, uh, it's a little bit later in my notes there. But I like the part in that scene when the when the first Black Panther appears. It's almost like a magic trick. When you see the doji appears first, the two joke dojis. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And then the lights go out, and when the lights go back on, you see the you see the first Black Panther appear. Well, not the first. Um, that's uh, Chaka. I mean, to ch oh Chaka. Chaka, yeah, the father of the one that will be following in the movie. Oh, Chaka yeah. appears. Right. Yeah, Chaka. Back when he was a little younger. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he got. And he got some, you know, some of those little um, uh, Af African, uh, I don't know what exactly they call, but they look pretty cool, though. Yeah. Um, look beads and stuff. Yeah, those kind of kind of looks like scarf or quilt or something like that there. Yeah. I say, but it's a good, but it's a cool look, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there were some kids looking at the, at the spaceship that they think that they might have think it might be a UFO up in the sky because it lights up. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what they might have think. Yeah, because remember, because one thing about Wakanda, they are very advanced with their technology. They're ahead of us. They're ahead of the rest of the world, including Japan. Probably, yeah, probably so. Yeah, I'm sorry, Japan, but apparently, <laughs> uh, nothing against you, Japan. Yeah, nothing. Oh boy, oh boy. They I do think, have better technology. I Talk about Japan. It's, at least this is not Yu-Gi-Oh! Universe, because Seto Kaiba would be a little jealous. Oh. No one's ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Now I just... Oh, boy. Ironic, because I kind of pictured uh, uh, Chala if he was Yami Yugi. Yeah. <laughs> my grandfather's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba, but it does contain the unstoppable Exodia. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that'd be so cool. <laughs> it's all uh, the African accent is always cool to hear. Yes. That is the that is the rule of thumb. <laughs> and make a person feel like that they that they are living that they are born in Africa, even though if you are or you are not in it, from Africa. And then you got and then also, you know, truth be told, just in all honesty, you know, all life started in Africa in general in reality. So yeah, you know. Even, you know, and then of course, you know, we split off, you know, the different nations split off into different countries, stuff like that, and, you know, different skins and stuff. Yeah. But everything originated in Africa there. Yeah. Mm, yeah, so. Oh, yeah. We, our, our, or, our origins lie in the cool country. Yeah. <laughs> See? The, the cool talking country. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like, like, uh, what's his name from Captain Planet? Let our powers combine. <laughs> and they go to vision between rich and poor. Yep, yep, because trust me, Africa got some riches. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially South Africa, since they have buildings over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, referring with, uh, Chaka, uh, to Chaka there, um, he's, um, Apparently, when he appears uh, after them, you know, after the whole narration, everything, uh, we're over at Prince Najabu, uh, son of Azuri. That's uh, so him and T'Chaka, that's Azuri is their father. Um, T'Chaka, um, they discuss, uh, the two of them discuss about Ulysses Claw uh, stealing a quarter ton of, ton of vibranium, and it's revealed that Jabba. That Jabu has assisted with the theft, but he denies it. But uh, turns out that his friend James is really Zuri, uh, an undercover spy, <laughs> which which proves the evidence that yeah, Jabu he's 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 been he's been hauling that vibranium there. And I know Jabu was mad at at Zuri. And what's bad at him? Oh yeah, yeah. He didn't like and like, that. why yeah. did you betray me? Mm. And this, and the whole thing of the fact that this vibranium is out—not um, all of it, but how just from here, you get that gives you a hint of how you know we had mentions of vibranium from you know previous movies like you know Banner, 
mentioned about vibranium. Hmm. Uh, so that's how some people were knowing about this already in the universe. Um, Tony, you know, he mentioned that he actually had some dealings with Ulysses Claw, not really knowing what kind of guy he was, but, you know, business-wise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what probably... And uh, probably wasn't too pleased after hearing more about Claw. <laughs> so, yeah. That's why y'all gotta be careful who you do business with. <laughs> yeah. mm. However, um, so, of course, after that little discussion and everything, uh, there is some other stuff that happens later, but we'll get to that. The, the movie uh, gets back to that. <laughs> so, we cut years later to, you know, after the events of Civil War were to talk where T'Chaka has died, and the mantle has gone to his son, uh, T'Challa. Um, so he's the Black Panther now. <laughs> and of course, we get a, and of course, we gotta get a, we gotta get another cool Black Panther scene to see him in, you know, some fighting action. <laughs> oh yeah, and and we we saw saw a glimpse of news reports that Wakanda remains hidden to the rest of the world. Oh yeah, yes. Uh, as a that, as, as a cover as a cover up. Sort of. Uh, they they have sort of this little holographic illusion. I think some kind of uh, feel to make it look a certain way to the rest of the world. And they think the the rest of the world think that Wakanda is still poor. Yeah, like just like a African farmland country. and stuff like that. Yeah, just like the rest of the African countries. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you go behind that barrier. It's a whole different country. Oh, yeah. It's like you're entering a, into a dream world. Matter of fact, Stanley's inspiration for making, you know, the Black Panther character and Wakanda and all that when he, you know, when they were first making all the different Marvel comics in the early days. Because Stan, Stanley's inspiration was the fact that he was really, he, uh, when he, you know, fat, learned stuff about Africa. To him, he saw Africa as a magical place. Yeah. Mm. Um, like you know, like like going to a like going to another world, sort of like a like Narnia or something like that. Mm. So yeah, that's one. So when he started making Black Panther, he made like um, that's why he said, "Well, they're gonna be a highly advanced civilization." <laughs> yep. So kudos to you, this family. Yeah. yeah. I I admire your I admire your way of thinking to that there, buddy. <laughs> I know he's I know I know uh, I know Chadwick Bose was probably hanging out with you now there. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Cheryl. Like, oh, like, you ready to see that sequel, did you? Ah, oh, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Excelsior! <laughs> well, come to forever. <laughs> Uh, gonna be watch, gonna be watching it like um, like that parody of Michael and Johnny Cash, <laughs> watching Glee. <laughs> but if, at least, at least they're watching a bet. At least, at least what they're watching is better than Glee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about no. I fell into a burning ring of fire. Oh, dang it! <laughs> Lucky you <I'm> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enough said there. <laughs> so with this cool Black Panther action scene, yeah, um you get like where the you know the guys are trying to walk like what where is he at? And uh, like there's like the scene with the dog. Ruff, ruff, ruff. <laughs> now it reminds me of a ghost. <laughs> yeah, like he's and he's just standing there completely still and Notice he don't do anything to the guy until they launch the attack. Yeah. But so I like Batman wait, waiting in the waiting to attack. Uh, um, and also what my mom told me about alligators and crocodile or crocodiles, uh, probably both of them, yeah. how they be standing real still. Sometimes they stand still with their mouth wide open. Yes. And you be and you be like, are they are they alive? Be like just, that, just the real steel. Um, also remind me of a certain insect that you would stand still for a while, but when they see a person, they would just scatter. 
Yes, uh, yeah. Probably can figure out what you're talking about there. Yeah. And also another example would be the Venus flytrap too. Yeah. So, you know, Venus flytrap, much like any plane, is gonna stand still, and then you stick your finger in that thing. <laughs> oh, that hurt. <laughs> Don't get me started with Victory Bell from Pokemon. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. The That's, Venus flytraps tend to have teeth. Yeah. That are sharp. Yes, and also stuff that they. If they catch something in them, like an uh, insect or whatever they're trying to catch, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff inside them that, that pretty much disintegrates that. Well, especially the big Venus fly traps, the mm -hmm. large ones. Uh-huh. Well, the small ones, they're okay. Yeah. Since, they're, since, since the teeth are really tiny. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, uh... So yeah, we, we uh, and also, also there is a uh, there is a line mentioned here that a lot of people talk about. Is even in the trailer before this movie, before Black Panther even came out. Don't freeze. I never freeze. <laughs> and I got I have to admit, honestly, when I first heard that line, hmm. I thought he said I never fleece. Hmm. I don't know. I think we. Uh, I know it's, now, it's obvious that the way he's pronouncing it is freeze, but I was thinking he was saying fleece. <laughs> the reason why, because I'm thinking about the fact, a panther, yeah. you know, like any cat, you know, and they'd be like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking in terms of that there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he said, I never fleece. <laughs> and, of course, he does freeze oh. when he sees Nakia. Shit. His, uh, Love interest now. Hmm. Or they say it's supposed to be his ex, but you know, they gonna look back up. <laughs> yeah. yeah people, if you even even people first even people that see this movie for the first time probably figure that out. Shit. But yeah, they gonna get back together. Get a room. <laughs> get get a room. <laughs> Heck, why not they get married too with that? Well, they would I guess if he was, you know, the character was still alive, yeah. Probably would. Yeah. yeah, get married. Mm hmm And that's another thing, that's that now that we've mentioned the key, that's what I was gonna mention. If he was still alive and passed the mantle to Shuri, probably one reason I would think of would be maybe. You remember um because there's something that him and Nakia do at the end of this movie, um, that would possibly cause like, well maybe we need to put more time into this mm -hmm. and let Shuri take care of the throne duties. Hmm. Yeah, good. And maybe, and maybe he, maybe him and uh, Nakia mentions in the movie about how she's trying to be more for the people around the world, hmm. and being how Chala has, you know, you know, he wanna, 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 uh, wanna, wanna do right for his lady. Yeah. Yeah. That would kind of that would kind of make sense there that he would. That that could be a possibility, you know, of a reason to, okay, well, I'll let my sister take over Black Panther. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Even then. if he decides to retire. Yeah, he had more time with Nakia there. <laughs> yeah. So, apparently, uh, the reason that they, uh, he actually invites, after the rescue, he invites her to Wakanda to see the ceremony where he's going to be crowned as king there. <laughs> Also, duly to note, uh, any of y'all that's probably read the comics, if you have, if you don't already know this, but a lot of comic readers know this, and probably some people who hadn't, prob they probably learned from the comic readers. Uh, originally, um, according to the com, uh, to the most of the comics, Chala actually had actually dated Storm from the X Men. He did. Mm-hmm. And she and she actually and then they actually married each other and she became his queen. Hmm. Did oh, they yeah. have a child together? I they may have. They may have possibly had there. Um I know in that movie uh, Heroes of Tomorrow, um, he has a son in that movie. Yeah. Uh but they never really mentioned who the queen was in that movie. Oh. Yeah, it never was mentioned there. But yeah, according to comics, yeah, him and Storm got a thing going there. Um and also and they even did it in a little series. Um not sure where you'd be able to find it, but it was a little 
sort of a low budget animation animated series, but it's but but it's not bad though. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's sort of you know low budget a little bit, um, but still pretty good. Where they actually acknowledge about him and Storm's relationship, mm-hmm. and so they even get to see the X Men ask and Storm about him. Mm-hmm. They and had a little cool thing going. That was catchy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, and speaking of music, <laughs> you gotta love the music that plays throughout this movie. <laughs> this, <laughs> that and trust me, I've listened and I and I would probably and chances are I'll probably listen to it again to really get in the, get in the mood for the sequel. Yeah. This they go. I've I've seen. I've actually listened to the score, the songs from this movie. Mm-hmm. They got some. They play. Some, they they play some scores and music <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, especially the drum beats. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh boy! Now you make that. Now, now you mention the drum, making me think of that. Uh, Stomp the Yard. Yeah. Imagine they mix that into Stomp the Yard. African drums. Uh huh. Mm, boy, now that's now that'd be a we are the painters, we are the hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> and also there's even one um, there's even one particular piece of music that plays when they're arriving in Wakanda. <laughs> and there's a part of that. Um, that's 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 the, that's my best way to do it. They 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 do it a little better, um, but there's a part of it where it sounds it, it makes you think of a hymn at church, <laughs> and the first thing come to my mind was imagining, Amen. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so so once they get there and everything, he, we meet up with his sister Shuri, of course. Um, and of course, Queen Ramonda, played by Angela Bassett, who is the mother, <laughs> mother and queen there. Angela Bassett, of course, never gonna age. <laughs> and look like she's the lightest. She she has the lightest skin out of all the people in the country. Well, sort of. Well, you had James L. Jones in uh, Coming to America, and he was pretty light skinned African. <laughs> But but you know why he was cho- but you know why he was chosen for his role there because of his voice. Uh huh. Greeting, son. <laughs> that one. I wonder if maybe what the, I just wonder what that nothing against the other actor that played Chaka there. Yeah. But I wonder what that would have been like um, if James Earl Jones played him in Civil War, hmm. and also in this movie talking to Chala, you know, like a uh, Mufasa to Simba. <laughs> hmm. It won't be too deep. Mm. Although maybe maybe the reason why they didn't choose him maybe because like I said I know you know he was in Come to America but uh, maybe they really um, wanted to be on par with the different skin tones and stuff. So yeah, of course the mother is light, but yeah, you got the son obviously got got to take after. One of the parents, at least, you know. So. Yeah, I think I think Suri is also like medium tone. Right. So yeah, they kind of they were sort of trying to make like yeah, these uh, act these children came from these parents. Yeah. Yeah. They. So yeah, that's probably another reason why. And yeah, I know first thing they're like, well, what about the fact that Eddie Murphy is the son of James O. Jones? <laughs> Well, maybe they didn't think of... I don't, I don't know what was on their mind. That's a different movie. You have to ask the ones who made that movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm, we're talking about Black Panther now. <laughs> I come to America. Yeah, when, yeah if they... If, if we... May, if, if, may, yeah, ask them. <laughs> <laughs> ask them why Eddie Murphy is James Earl Jones' son. Sure. And also, that might explain why Martin Lawrence is his son, too. Oh. <laughs> Roscoe Jenkins. Sure. <laughs> so... Meanwhile, while uh, before it starts and everything, we get a look in London Kingdom uh, with Eric Killmonger, who's uh, kind of looking around at the different museum artifacts at uh, the African exhibit, and he actually starts educating the tour guide on where these things really come from. Ooh. And as he's doing so, and just sort of walking back and forth between them, 
Not really. He's now, now, now. Keep in mind, we know what he's gonna do later. But at the moment, you know, he's just, you know, just a regular dude, just walking around, looking at the stuff, mm-hmm. conversating about it. But notice, uh, and this, this is just from the movie. It's just what we observe in the movie. Um, not, not saying everybody's like this, mm-hmm. but the. The white people in this in the movie, yes, in that scene, are observe or watching him very closely. So and and he even mentions that he's aware of this, and they looking suspicious at him. Right, so uh, implying they make sure he don't steal nothing. Hmm. Yeah, because of yeah, black, and then also he said remember uh, and also kind of the way he looked too. I'm thinking things like mm, some gangster, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sort of like why'd I get married when um all when the ladies were shopping and um they I think Sheila Sheila had got mad about what they mentioned about Mike and left and it was a white cashier walks yeah. up. We don't keep any money in the registers. It's like what? <laughs> And oh boy, Angela was the first. Marcus' wife, Angela, was the first one to go after, to go off on her. Like what? He's like, did, did you just? Uh, look, a- Angela, they go. Oh no, 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 no! I got something to say about this. Now. It would surprise me if they have white, white only establishments in this day and time. Well, they probably wouldn't. But yeah, you do. But you do have some. You know, like I say again, not all of them. Yeah. You know we. Yeah, we got we got some good we got, we got some good we got some good white friends now. Yeah. Trust me. It's a, we go to Brooklyn, remember? <laughs> but yeah, you got some that and even even back during the time when the segregation was going on, you 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 had you had you had some whites that were really cool with us and weren't you know weren't down with that segregation thing. Hmm. But yeah, it was a lot harder to. You know, to to be that way during that time because yeah, it was because it being it was a law and it was so rough to yeah. yeah so yeah just like we had it rough back then the the whites that was trying to be on our side yeah they they would though they were the ones that were getting rid of they was like like dude what hey 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 leave them alone this is my friend like, can we all just get along <laughs> yeah this is my this is a, Yep. Yeah, so I like that one scene in Hairspray. It was a white boy he had a black girlfriend. Yeah. It's like, and they and they said she couldn't come in. He's like, what are they? They say just let her come in. She's with me. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, yeah, like I can say, but yeah, the ones in that scene looking at Killmonger. Yeah, they represent the ones that. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much like Bull Carter now. <laughs> even though they're, it's even though it's England. Mm-hmm. But that just goes to show you, yeah, you got some that like that there. Yeah. Yeah, they be like, oh, watch, watch him. He might steal something. I know there's one thing he did. He, I think some he poisoned the, music, the tour guy's coffee. Yes, that's he poisoned. When he um, when he mentioned that he was aware that he's like, you got all the security in here. Everybody want got their eyes on me, but you, but you didn't think to look at what was in your drink. Yeah, and I guess that coincidentally took effect at that point. I assume that his girlfriend may have did because I think she was at the reception co- at the coffee shop. Yes, she worked at she the coffee was. shop, so mm. I think she did. Mm. She poisoned her coffee. Yeah, I mean, probably kind of a silent uh, reveal. <laughs> yeah, I'm going on my break. <laughs> and she had the security systems on her phone. Yes, that's why they weren't able to see what was going on. And she pretended that nothing happened. Mm-hmm. All casually, and of course, um, for they had um, they had Claw to strategically um, s- help them steal the artifacts. Him and a couple of his dudes there, um, you know, they say shooting everybody and everything. And one thing you got we got to say about Claw, um, he's portrayed a little differently in this in the MCU than he is in the original comics, and also in World Mightiest Heroes. Um, here in the MCU, of course, we know he was introduced in Age of Ultron, even mentioned by Tony, and then, you know, we met him, and Ultron cut his arm off. Ooh. That's why he has this replacement vibranium arm that has an Ultra Cannon in it, sort of like Cyborg's Sonic Cannon. Yeah. However, 
uh, in the comics, he actually battled with Chaka, and during the fight, his, he lost an arm during the fight, but he, he managed to kill Chaka, though, mm. and that's why Chala um, became a sworn enemy of him to take revenge for, to avenge his father. And to repl- and he got that you know robot arm to replace his arm that Chaka took now, and also I think that was kind of the same in World's Mightiest Heroes, but um, but there was also he was working with uh, Man Ape in that one, hmm. um, which we'll explain about Man Ape's uh, difference too coming up, um, and. It, that any of y'all that's seen the series on uh, should be on Disney Plus or Mightiest Heroes. Yeah. He became uh, something happened with the vibranium and the weapon he had, where Claw became some kind of sound monster. Oh. Yeah, yeah, not easy to face someone like that, especially on your ears. Yeah, it it, it, it is it is painful to your ears, yeah. especially when you're up close. Just like ecstatic when he had to turn the volume up against this. Uh, Monster that was really from a girl who couldn't stand loud noises. Ooh. Hey, yeah, wear earplugs. Right. What? I said right. <laughs> so. So yeah, there is that. There. Um, due to. Uh, oh yeah. Some chocolate was cute. Oh okay. yeah. Um. So back at the ceremony, uh, we get a little, we get a lot of beautiful, just like we got a lot of good music, we get some beautiful imagery now. Especially the people up in the mountains. Yes. Oh, I don't know how long it took, how, how many, how many uh, crew members it took to put all that together, but wow. It makes you wonder if it's real or CGI. Probably could be a cross between both. Like I say, it's really... Because, I mean, the way it's put together and everything, it's really kind of hard to tell if if uh, if it is CGI. It's really kind of hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, then, like, all the people standing on there, you know, moving. You know, some of them, you know, if you look closely, some of them are, you know, have... I mean, they're all moving the same, but you might notice one slightly moving a little different from the other. <laughs> if, it, if it was real, these people must be brave. That to they stand can, up, to like not just stand up, but has a, but doesn't have a fear of heights. Well, you you gotta remember how they've grown up in this type of tradition. Though. Yeah, I mean, that's just like coming up. That's just like say, if you came up in the old or New Testament as opposed to now. Yeah. You and you come up back in the days of the Bible. Yeah, you probably be used to doing a lot of walking from place to place and and even climbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but see, now yeah we. Yeah, we kind of need um, even someone that's fit, you know, even a body, even a fit bodybuilder was, yeah, like, do you want me to walk from here to where? <laughs> you <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I know it would be impossible for anyone. Let's just say anyone who's a person from Los Angeles trying to walk to New York, New York City. Yes, again. that'll take them like months. Yeah, which I mean, it's I mean. In general, it does even for them, but that's the thing. People back then, they that's all. I mean, the only thing they had for transportation was you know the animals like horses and cattle and Not stuff. Not just animals, but their feet. Right, and I think most of the people that were pampered and that were the royal folks, like the kings and stuff. Yeah. And they had people do a lot of stuff for them, but yeah, if you wasn't no king or queen or in the royalty, hmm. yeah, you gotta do some walking, buddy. <laughs> You might you might get a cam might get a camel, but uh there, there's gonna be some places where you're gonna have to walk. <laughs> mm. Yep, so uh Yeah, is and also one thing about to say about the cedar, the music and just the movie in general, this is really something um especially as African American, you really got to acknowledge uh being that this is a superhero film too. You know, black cast, main, you know, black Panther and all that. This is a major step up from what we come up when, you know, people like us say do, you know, a black superhero movie in general. Um, and I'm talking for for a lot for a big budget live action style, because we come from movies like Blank Man. <laughs> Sorry, movies. Yeah. 
Well, take now. Now I will say, yeah, Black Man. Don't get me wrong. Black Man's not a bad film. It is funny. Um, Meteor Man is pretty good. Even Steel's okay. But you got. But I'm talking. But when I say come up with some of like what's put into the movie, because see, yeah, I mean they're deep. I mean they're decent and enjoyable. But we weren't given a lot to make those movies. Even even Steel, because you know Steel is a DC character. For uh, Shaquille O'Neal play, you would think being a DC property that they would, you know, you know, do kind of like what Marvel's doing with Black Panther. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hey, it's one of your boys, DC, but no, they ain't give much. It's <laughs> like for their movies, they give them like ten ten million dollars or less to make them. Mm -hmm. Ten million or less. Yep, and and they didn't make too much of it at the box office back. And need I say more about Blank Man and Meteor Man? Yeah. Again. The movie is not saying that they're that they're bad. I I enjoy the, I enjoy those movies, hmm. but I'm just saying that this is an evolution of where we've come from in filmmaking for you know superheroes, uh, turning around black folks there. Because one also another thing you gotta look at, this is an all black cast, um, the majority black cast too, yeah. on a big budget, and you take and like blank man, medium man, I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, your main star is black and everything, but yeah, then <laughs> that's that's pretty much that's pretty much the most of it. You may have a few other like side characters stuff like that, but yeah, <laughs> and they like say again, not much of a budget thrown at it there. I bet eighty to ninety percent of the cast is mostly from Africa. Eighty to ninety percent, possibly. Yeah, I'm just going by assumption. It's a possibility there. Yeah. Not not just not completely one hundred. And I tell you now, now while like I can say now 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 while I would say Black Man Media Man are at least enjoyable, but just not with a big budget like Black Panther. Mm -hmm. One thing that they um, while they still gave us some good entertainment, mm -hmm. one movie really failed at that, and it's done by the father of a rapper that I really enjoy. P. Miller's Black Superman. And I, I bet nobody never heard of it. Mm. Because it's a sorry independent film. I was thinking that even if, I mean, even for a low budget, I was thinking at least, I, you know, it would be entertaining at least, like Black Man, you know, but it's, it, you know, it, it's just bad. It's just bad, and it's not even because of the budget. It's just It's just bad. <laughs> yeah. And he put his costume in a plastic bag. Mm. And this was Pete Miller. Now, like I say, I've heard more of Little Romeo than Pete Miller, and all respect to both of them. But I was, I'm like, Pete Miller, man, you think at least do at least come up with a, something better than this, man? I'm and I think we found it found it in our local library. Yes. <laughs> and I think what I remember is some parts of it were scratched. Mm. It must have been an old DVD, or it was so bad, the movie was so bad that they scratched it. Oh, the person, low, the, the either, person scratched it. Either that or low quality. <laughs> probably a uh, lower quality than Blank Man. <laughs> and I'll give Blank, I'll give Blank Man this much. Blank Man was, post to, was actually supposed to be a movie on a budget there. Because of the type of hero he was, Sick. yeah, he that, that actually he actually was meant to be a budget hero, a low budget hero. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> imagine a reboot of Blank Man and Meteor Man, and possibly Steel. Well, hopefully, hopefully at least the Steel one would be better. Yeah, May, possibly Meteor Man too, but yeah, I guess. Well, I guess any, I guess in this day and time, they probably would, they I would think they all. Have a bit of an upgrade in you know the technology used to make them and stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe a uh, blank man would be sort of at the level like you remember when Tom Holland before he got the suit from Iron Man. Yes. When he had his uh, onesie as he called it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe something like at that level. Oh, onesie. Right. Where yeah, it was. Yeah, he but he still was able. But he still had a lot of cool stuff from you know the tech of today's time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe something like that, maybe. Huh. Um. So. So yeah, we we've stepped up, and now, 
we step up into the ceremony, <laughs> Shala has to battle one on one with anybody with any one person of a tribe that wants to take the throne. And I think they only have like five tribes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And four out of the five tribes decided not to challenge today, except for that one, which le which is led by the man ape. Mabaka, Mabaka is the leader. Yeah. Of the Jabari, and and their tribe is the Jabari tribe there. And they say, I'm I'm ready for a challenge, they, and mm -hmm. I want to take the role as king. Yep. He's a, ooh ah 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 ooh ah 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 ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're sort of, and another thing that they sort of changed them a little bit from the comics and also the animated series of Ninja War Mightiest Heroes, um, they're actually more of rivals toward each other mm -hmm. than, you know, than like, ooh, they're, this is good and they're evil. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're more, it's more like um, Goku Vegeta rivalry. Mm -hmm. Or even ironic, Michael jo Michael B. Jordan actually looked at anime like Naruto to get into his character. That's Killmonger. Mm -hmm. At least it's better than when he was the Human Torch in the rebooted Fantastic Four. He probably would agree. And like I said, that that movie actually possibly would have been a lot better than it was, but there was so much stuff with the studio. Yeah, conflicts with the studio. Right, so. Mm, they say Michael B. Jordan may have even had a better script when he signed on before they started changing it. Yeah, I bet they gave him funny lines. Probably so. <laughs> but that that role of as the human toy made him look like a stiff. Yeah, like I say, you know, you never know what say stuff went on behind the scenes there. Plus, they trying to be like DC, talk about the way the tone looked. Yeah, and I mean, like I say, that. Um, I mean that could have been part of it too, but I think yeah, but I think a lot of it was in just you know a lot of people putting their hands in the story, sort of like you know with Zack Snyder stuff with uh, BBS and just and Justice League before he came back and gave his cut. Because mm. see, you notice when he gave his cut of Justice League, big four-hour movie, it was a lot better. It was it was a dark tone, yes. But it was a lot better than what the studio was trying to mess with on them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, when they actually just let this dude do what he had to do. Hmm. Like I say, and some of you, you know, you, like I say, you may, you may like what he got. You may not like what he got. But one thing that we can agree on, whether you like or dislike how he did it, is that it came from him. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and when it comes, f and when that person, when you let somebody alone to do what they do, it's it's, it's usually like or dislike. Is you is it you can at least you can at least say, yeah, you know, okay, I really feel that's that's one hundred percent their vision at least. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, oh yeah, and with the MC, so. Yeah, man, they sort of treat uh, Baka, aka Man Ape, him and Chala as like rivalry, like really fierce rivals, Yugi Kaiba, Goku Vegeta, those type of styles. But in the animated series and possibly the comics, yeah, he like he was a he was pretty much another major enemy like Claw was there. Yeah, um he wasn't just a rogue tribe off to himself, but yeah, he was actually trying to take over all the other tribes of Wakanda there, hmm. very ruthlessly, I might add, and and he act and in the animated series he actually killed Chaka. He did. Uh huh. And Chala was coming back to avenge his father to face him to avenge his father. So yeah, so yeah, you got one version where it's Claw that kills Chaka, and another version where it's Man Ape. Hmm. <clears throat> it will surprise me. It has a lot of versions, especially from fans. And actually, a lot of oh, I, I put it this way: they're actually that's why you got the multiverse in general. Because comics back in the early days, you know, they had one way they would start off, and then you had different writers over time that would write different takes on it and stuff like that. Yeah. Some would be similar, but there was always something different in one comic writer from another. Hmm. So you end up having multiple comic versions of of some some things there. Yep, so for all the, for a lot of you that's like, oh, but that's not like the comic. That did not happen. <laughs> just, 
Just remember, the comics have changed over the years, just like TV series and movies. <laughs> and so that's why we have a multiverse. <laughs> now, in my perspective, the most important thing, I have no problem with following source material. That's good. I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, hey, what would this look like, you know, in live action? That's pretty cool. Hmm. But my thing, uh, more so important than, than what you adapt, is, is it good? Hmm. Yep. And that was the thing I looked at with, especially like when we looked at Zack Snyder's Justice League. Hmm. Um, probably, probably a lot different from what I would write for Justice League and a lot of other people, but it was, it was actually good, though. Not just is it good, but does it live up to its time? Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's that's the most important thing. Yeah, because you can actually find something good, even even if it's something that, well, I wouldn't write it that way, or I don't think it should have went that way. But did you enjoy it? Hmm. Well, yeah, seems pretty good. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, as Superman said to Batman about the iPhone. Dude, that is so exhausting. Why don't you just enjoy the, the features that someone else makes for a change? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometime, yeah, it's good for us to create stuff, but, you know, nothing wrong with enjoying other people's works. <laughs> Have a little best of both worlds. Yeah, so, so yeah, with, uh, so, yeah, that's some of the changes that were made uh, for this movie, because, yeah, also for the movie, yeah, Killmonger is supposed to be the big bad there. But you at least, but you do get man Ape and Claw, though, in this movie. Hmm. Um, so they have their ritual combat there, and uh, and of course, uh, and of course, uh, Chala ends up being the one that wins, and he spares Baka. He act, um, he tell, um, cause Baka's thinking like, dude, the only way you're gonna win is if you kill me. He's like, but no, yield. Your tribe needs you. <laughs> now it reminds me of the scene from Civil War when Simo tried to kill himself, but but the but he um, Chichala stopped him. Oh, that, that's that's pretty. That's yeah. actually a good. That's okay. It just came I to didn't, me. I didn't think I didn't think about that, but yeah, that's even though Simo was the villain. That's actually a good. That um, I don't know if that was on their mind when uh, in that scene, but that's a good call. That's a good callback, though. Yeah. Yeah, him sparing Baka like he did Zemo. Yeah, even though Zemo's the villain, mm -hmm. that he he could just let him die. Tom, I'm talking about referring to Zemo. Right, because and then yeah, at one point he cause remember he also wanted to kill Bucky at one point too yeah. until he until that's that that was one reason why when he followed you know Tony and Cap. Yeah. Why he was sort of just watching first before he did anything. Yeah. You no, know, he was just sort of observing what was going on. <laughs> then he went after Zemo, but not to kill him, but the you know, because he realized, like, okay, so this dude was controlling Bucky. That's why Bucky did what he did. Mm -hmm. Zemo was controlling him. But Zemo did what he did because he lost his family and he wants to take vengeance. And that's the same thing I'm doing. Yeah. This doesn't make this doesn't make me any better than them. So, yeah, we need. To, yeah, Zemo. Um, let's just stop. You know? So he just decides to spare his life. Right. Not saying a life for a life. He just he just going by the moral code. Right. Because I mean, and then yeah, when you think about it, yes, yeah, actually, because I mean, you think Zemo is fighting for vengeance. If if Chala had actually went through with his plan and killed Zemo. Or let Saint Simo kill himself. Right. Or then somebody that's close to Zemo would have been like, oh, He killed him. Ooh. I will take my vengeance on you, Black Panther. Oh. Yeah, there'd be a never-ending vengeance war. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of got to, kind of got to, um tone those vengeances down a little <laughs> bit there, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it'll still go on with some people, trust me, because, you know, everybody's different, but at least there, there are some that we can tone down. <laughs> yeah, as I say, <laughs> we, we can at least do what we can to keep it from getting out of hand. <laughs> so, after the ceremonial battle, uh, Chala talks with his father in the spirit realm, sort of similar to Simba Mufasa, <laughs> Uh, about you know how he should lead and everything, 
some uh, getting some advice. Almost reminds me of Jesus talking to Joseph. Yeah, oh, sorry. oh, oh, in the Jesus in the Jeremy Sisto movie, yes. Yeah. Or Jesus talking to God Himself. Yeah, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I. This uh, um, so. Not only does he get some advice from his father, but he also has a little talk with Nakia to, you know, see what's up with her. You yeah. know, what's what she been up to, and kind of. And kind of here, and, and he actually, and he, um, now he doesn't, you know, he's not, he doesn't act upon what she says, like, right away. But he does, but he, but he is, but he does hear her out, you know, like, you know, what, what all she does have to say in general about, you know, what's going on outside the world, what Wakanda should really be doing. Hmm. You know, it should be opened up and help the people there. Hmm. And he even, um... And he even has a further discussion with uh, his brother, Wakabi, who I thought was his best friend, but they actually are brothers, mm. uh, which makes sense because the news report at the beginning of this movie did state that Chala had two sons. So, mm. so apparently Chala's brother is, uh, is Wakabi, who is played by none other than our boy from Get Out. Oh. I guess we... I guess we know where he went after those events um, ended. There, <laughs> guess he went back to his. Um, guess he went back home to Wakanda, just to escape. Yeah. At least he got. At least he got him a new girlfriend, one of the dojis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, she'll she. Now, now, trust me, she'll be a lot better girlfriend than your than your first one so, out there yeah. who was trying to put your who was trying to put somebody else's brain in your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, take yeah, take a look at that movie, get out. You'll see you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh Yeah, um So then of course uh So then, of course, uh, after all that discussion, you know, uh, we uh, we then get a, uh, they then get contacted by uh, one of the Doji, of course, that uh, which is of course the one that's dating uh, that's dating um, Wakaba. Wakaba. Wakabi, I mean, yeah, my love. <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep, and so. They um so yeah they they're informed that Claw is is um is about to make some kind of trade over in Korean some vibranium of course so it's mission time again and but before but before Charlie goes out sure we gotta get him upgraded <laughs> with a new Black Panther suit which which is really cool the way it looks like it's morphing on him yeah. the whole nanotech thing <laughs> and of course in Infinity War I think Iron Man got a hold of it there it's nanotech. Like it, <laughs> and he also got some sneakers that are soundproof, so he could sneak around, and nobody can't hear him. Mm -hmm. I wish I have shoes like those. Well, I, I bet Jay, I know James Bond would want them shoes too. Yeah, the name is Bond, James Bond. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, what are those? <laughs> you're wearing your open, is a you your sandals in my pool laboratory. <laughs> And of course, there is a funny scene about that suit where they show how it can absorb damage yeah. and then blast it back at you. Hmm. And she demonstrates on Chala him unaware and filming it. Hmm. Delete that footage. <laughs> hmm. uh, might be, might be too late, Chala. She might be already got a, few, a thousand hits on YouTube already. Ow. <laughs> oh, and look at the comment section. Hmm. Blast from the past. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I like that comment right there. <laughs> <laughs> and if you try to get the phone from him, <laughs> just like a yeah. That now you know they definitely a brother and sister. No. What's like, next? He fall out the window. <laughs> I tell you, it'd be like me and me and, me and my cousin uh, Tiffany, who's a who would like who like my little sister there. <laughs> She probably that's she probably would she probably would do exactly what Shuri did. 
<laughs> yep, to me. <laughs> yeah, she would She would do it. She knows she would. <clears throat> so they find Claw at the casino when the trade's about to happen and everything. And uh, you mentioned about James Bond. Yeah, it definitely feels like we're walking through a James Bond scene. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, James Bond did travel all around the world. Oh, yeah. And especially... And he even got some cool music for the background for this beat, for this scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, and let's just say the fact um, when they when they do find Claw, uh, and you know the the whole and then they get and then the whole fight breaks out and everything. Uh, the doji that goes with um, Chala and and uh, Nakia is with them too. Yeah. The one the doji that goes with them. Uh, with a red dress on and everything and is fighting with that spear and stuff. First thing that comes to my mind is imagine if you're a kid yeah, and you get with your friends and their friends are like, hey, you want to come with us here? My mom said not to go there. What, you chicken? Hmm. So you go with your friend because you don't want to be chicken <laughs> and y'all y'all having fun everything just just any place in jail i'm not 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 the pacific but you know mm. any it, whatever place that your mother told you not to go <laughs> or or your parents in jail but your basically your mother mm. all of a sudden something happens at that place mm. and you're in trouble sort of like Simba with the hyenas <laughs> and then your mother shows up to get uh uh whooping whooping behind <laughs> And you're scared you know she's gonna come for you once she wants everything clear. Ouch. <laughs> That's what the doji made me think of. Like an overprotective mom. Yeah, when your when your mother comes to that place you that she told you not to go to. It'll be worse if the mom has a spear. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Especially something break out and she needs that spear. That's that that's that's the sound that be that they you making that, um, and uh, also remind me of I was in this situation too. Uh, I was riding my bike around this track. Mom went, mom and I would used to go walking in, and she told me, Gabe, stay in my sight with that bike. If I don't see you, you're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, uh, there was this kid that came up, he had a he was on his bike too. Said, Hey, you want to ride through this area? Okay. But we ride through, with, and we're all like, yeah, well, this is pretty fun. Ooh, wee. <laughs> almost, almost like that music from Pokemon with the bicycle. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and you think every, everything's all fun, and then all of a sudden we get to the end of the path. Mama and his mom were standing side by side. Like, oh, snap. <laughs> Uh, you probably can guess what happened after that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. As as my as uh, one of my one as one of my previous pastors say, you'll get that when you get home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, back to the cool action scene at the <laughs> casino. <laughs> it leads to us uh, seeing Charlotte's Black Panther suit uh, morph on him, sort of like Power Ranger style. <laughs> Just um, imagine he all of a sudden, imagine he all of a sudden have a morph and go, it's morphin' type. <laughs> Black Panther. <laughs> like Mastodon. <laughs> that would be Black Panther Ranger. <laughs> Black Panther Ranger power. <laughs> Black Panther and the morphing grid. Oh boy. <laughs> There's what are you gonna need some vibranium for that morpher. <laughs> mm. So. Um, let's just, it's a lot, um, also, the transformation also kind of, um, especially since it happened right in, like, real time. Yeah. Uh, where people, you are, you know, like, if you was, if we were standing out and he ran by us, we would see it. Yeah. Sort of like that, uh, Digimon crossover when the kids saw, like, Takato and, and, um, uh, what's Takuya. his name? Takuya. Them, like, Takuya. Spirit Evolve and Takato merging with Gilmore right in front of them. Did you didn't see the you didn't see like the fancy background screens that you know the audience see. But now you the next evolution. Yeah. Spirit <laughs> Like he was actually turning like the different color that he that you see him do right in front. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Like, like what? 
And don't get me started with Tuxedo Mask's transformation in front of Sailor Moon. And when he saw Sailor Moon transform. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Sailor Moon. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, as you... After, after a cool car chase and also a hilarious scene of Nakia and the driver thing <laughs> that everybody in the theater kind of laughed at. Ooh. <laughs> because, but yet the doji got to do a cool surfboard pose <laughs> with a spear. All she needs is a surfboard. <laughs> Which, uh, I didn't think about this in the notes, but you know what Nakia riding up with the steel with the steering wheel stuff reminded me of? Yeah. Lego, uh, the CGI say Lego Batman. Oh yeah. When when Joker met, uh, pulled his car apart. <laughs> mm. So. Once Claw is captured, of course, um, and interrogated by Everett Ross, not not talking about General Ross from the Incredible Hulk, <laughs> um, Killmonger busts Claw out, and in, and um, and Ross uh, and Everett Ross gets gets injured trying to save Nakia from the uh, from one of the attacks. This really adds some layers to Ross's character there, because you know. At first, when you see him, he's not—he's not evil or nothing like that. He's just—he's just sort of misunderstood with certain things. Well, actually, I was gonna say more. Well, he. Well, okay, yep. Yeah, um, he. Uh, the way his view at you know what's going on. You know he's. You know there's some things that obviously he fully. Um, probably doesn't understand fully. Uh, especially especially when he first appeared in Civil War, because mm -hmm. in his perspective, you know, in Civil War. His thing was just, okay, you two are fighting and it's causing a lot of damage and they want y'all to stop, so <laughs> we need y'all to stop. <laughs> Pretty much simple as that, you know, hey, I'm trying I'm just trying to keep the peace here. <laughs> you know, I ain't I ain't trying to do no mustache twirl world all I just I, hey, y'all just need to stop. <laughs> Almost like trying to break up some kids fighting. <laughs> like, hey, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> so but this really adds some layers to his character there, like, you know, he, um, um, yeah, the fact, you know, he what he's not too fond of Chala at first, you know, in this first scene, stuff like that, because mm -hmm. remember, yeah, superheroes in general, they, they're not, they're, they're kind of mm -hmm. iffy with them at the moment, but, mm -hmm. yeah, he, but he still threw himself in front of the Kia, mm -hmm. you know, don't know, and, and take, take into account, he don't he don't know her or the doji lady hmm. but he still saved her yeah. he just, without thinking or so like bulk when he saved that little baby in power rangers yeah hmm. so um so later um chala learns the truth about uh Najobi, that Najobi is killmonger's father hmm. and he was and how you know like we mentioned before he was assisting claw with the vibranium theft and Joby actually tried to attack Zuri hmm. um, back then when Zuri was younger. But Chaka defended Zuri, and in the process of defending him, he ended up killing Joby Ooh. with his, you know, because he had his Black Panther suit and stuff. Yeah. The claws, which pretty much like Superman killing Zod to save a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, so shortly after Eric Killmonger arrives in Wakanda, he after killing Claw, of course, uh, he reveals his real name is N is Jadaka is Najadaka. God do the Najadaka. The son of Najobi. <laughs> I found my daddy in the apartment room with Claw Panther claws in him. And I think he just came here for revenge. Pretty much, and he want that, and as part of, per his revenge, he want that throne. Yes, he want to be the new pan Black Panther. Mm -hmm. And he even had a moment where he looked over at uh, Ramona, sub auntie. <laughs> and I know she wasn't pleased. Mm -hmm. So of course he challenges Chala for the throne to avenge his father. However, the fight gets really even more. It even gets more brutal than than you know. Chala and the man ate. Yes. Because of course, uh, Killmonger's fighting to kill. <laughs> he don't care. Sort of, sort of like the the originals and the clones and Pokemon. Yes. Yeah, when they were just fighting to kill. Mm-hmm. But Zuri tries to stop Killmonger 
you know, tries to reason with him. Yeah. But, yeah, he just kills Zuri, then throws Chala down the waterfall. Ouch. To cl and claims victory as a new king. And the people think that Chichal is dead. Yep, because of, yeah, we've, a lot, even some people in the theater thought that too. Yeah. Um, as I found out from uh, an old friend of ours, um, when he went to see it by, with his family, yeah. um, he says, because they had the little boy with them, yeah. they, had, they, had to, they, they had to go, they had to go after their little boy, run, little boy right after the theater. Yeah. So uh, they had to catch him, like, like hey, 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 this is a movie. This is a, remember what we told you? This is a movie, remember? Oh. <laughs> so he, uh, he got upset about Chala being thrown down the waterfall. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sort of like how kids were upset when Optimus Prime died. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, however, um, unlike Optimus, well, Optimus Prime did come back, but he didn't come back in the movie, though. Oh. Yeah, it was much later because they, because uh, a lot of the parent requests were coming in. Hmm. So, uh, so Killmonger he receives the Black Panther power, and he demands that the source of it be burned. However, unknown to him, Nakia has taken a piece of the source, the heart shape, which is called the heart shape herb, of course. Hmm. Um, then Killmonger demands war. A war that divides Wakanda because you know the different opinions of it, so, sort of referencing Lion King two with the Outlanders and the Pride Landers. Well, mixed with Lion King, the first Lion King and two. Yeah, so like they put two movies in one. Yeah, the first Lion King with when it comes to Killmonger and T'Challa fighting reminds me of Scar and Mufasa fighting. Oh, he, well, actually, I think it was Scar and Simba that fought there. Oh, Scar. Because he pushed Mufasa off the, off the ledge. Yeah. And then Simba was fighting Scar. Yeah. At the end of the movie. <laughs> After, you know. Hmm. Which, of course, the only reason that fight even happened was because Scar decided to slap some Firestones in Simba's face. Oh. Yeah. So Simba would practically fight down defense. Because <laughs> he told Scar, get out, run away, and never return. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much a merciful punishment. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, um, Shuri, Ramona, and Ross, and Nakia, they go to Mabaka to get some help uh, by offering him the herb to fight Killmonger. But, Baka figures that Baka has a better idea. Hmm. He reveals that, he reveals that some fishermen found Shala and brought them to his to his tribe, and of course, they and like I mentioned before, since they're more just rivals and not you know enemies, yeah. they actually they they actually they kept him on. They say he's in the coma right now. That ISIS was keeping him alive. Oh, <clears throat> that reminds me of Captain America when he was frozen. Mm -hmm. Except it didn't take him seventy years, just for a brief moment. Yeah, <laughs> so. So of course, uh, ja, uh, so they get so they give Chala the herb, which revives them out of the ice. There, okay. and Black Pan and as Black Panther, he returns to fight Killmonger. <laughs> and yeah, like we mentioned before, it's pretty much like Lion King two at this point. Yes. Okay. When they uh, attack. Do, 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 do. When, they're, oh, when, they're, when, they, when they are against each other. Uh-huh. Almost reminds you when America was against each other back in the early days with the segregation. Oh, yeah, okay, the blacks and white thing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Except yeah. they are all in one color, all in one race, fighting each other. Well, it just goes to show you um, segregation is not the only battle that there is out there. You got, because you can remember, you remember Moses when he... When he killed the Egyptian to save a Hebrew, yeah. Uh, the scriptures say later he found two Hebrews beating each other up. Ooh. He was like, hey, "What's going on here?" And one Hebrew was looking like, "Oh, so what you gonna do? You gonna you gonna kill me like the Egyptian?" Moses like, "Oh snap! I gotta get out of here." Seth. <laughs> yeah. So, so of course, eventually this war ends there. Um, Realizing the horrors of the division in Wakanda, mm -hmm. uh, especially between um, what's it, um, 
uh, Kobe, uh, Kobe, um, Kobe, um, Chala's brother. Wakabi. Wakabi. Between Wakabi and his, and his, uh, and his love. And it's like, it's like, what have we become? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they, because they look up to their people. Mm-hmm. What? And, and they, and he drops his weapon. Thus, all the people that were on his side see this. Yeah. And they surrender with him. Mm-hmm. So, so after that ending, uh, we wrap things up with Chala and Killmonger, who eventually, yeah, Killmonger gets stabbed in the process because, like I say, Killmonger's trying to fight to kill. Mm-hmm. Chala tries to offer, offer to, um, you know, knowing what Killmonger's gone through and, and why he is the way he is, he tries to offer Killmonger mercy as like, look, look we can heal you. Why? So you can lock me up? No. I was taught that death is much better than bondage. And he he de- he delivers the final killing blow to himself. Mm. Mm. Right at the sunset of Wakanda. Ooh. Now that's a scene there, more like a tearjerker. Mm-hmm. Sort of. As Brownie says, sort of like um, Kobu's mother when they tried to yeah. When they were reason with her, right? To uh, tell, like, look, just give us your paw, we can help you up. And she refused, swiped at Nala, and which caused her to fall into the river. And, yeah. and, and not only did the fall in the river kill her, but also the bunch of logs that were in the river. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I guess so, he wanted to be reunited with his ancestors as well as his. His own father. That was that. That was killed there. Yeah. Yep. Well, one thing that does one at least one good thing that comes out of on Chala's side is not on um as becoming the king again. He decides to um he re, he asks Nakia to stay with. To, to help to stay with him, you know, king and queen, obviously. Yeah. And by doing so, he wants he wants to he wants to help her with her request of reaching of making Wakanda the whole nation of Wakanda uh, reach out to other people around the world. More like being open to the public. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to try to in in the hopes of trying to you know bring some peace between the nations there. Mm-hmm. As one as one thing he states at a, at a press conference in one of the post credit scenes, say when um, in order to go stronger, say you become weak when you build bridges to de- say when you divide yourselves, but a strong but a wise man builds his strength from the bridges to join others in with him. Mm. Mm. That's an interesting quote. Mm-hmm. And sort of like Martin Luther King bringing, you know, telling, hey, people of all race, you know, black, white, Jew, Hispanic, Asian, whatever race does, let's let's join together. Yeah. You know, we all we all people. <laughs> We're all the human race. Mm-hmm. And and of course, we follow that up with, uh, like I mentioned, both critics say, as well as some really good visuals there. Then. And a good and a song called "All the Stars," hmm. okay. and another post-credit scene that tells us what's going on with Bucky after Civil <laughs> War. For those of you who didn't, who watched Black Panther but didn't see Civil War, hmm. yep, he's he's given a say. We know it leads to Infinity War where he gets a replacement vibranium arm. Hmm. Um, and of course, they say we gotta get you ready. And it's sorta the whole thing with Bucky being there is actually a reference to a comic of Black Panther where there was a character introduced called White Wolf. Yes. Um, White Wolf originally was a was um, a Caucasian adoptive Caucasian brother of the Black Panther that was taken. Uh, he was taken in by Chala's family. And you know he was raised up as his brother, so they fought together as Black Panther and White Wolf. You know, kind of teamed up there. 
However, with the MCU, they since uh, they didn't have uh, they didn't do it like that, they instead put Bucky in the slot. You know, from Winter Soldier to White Wolf. <laughs> Google me. <laughs> White Wolf then. <laughs> as long as he's happy, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> well, I put it this way, he's probably better he's probably feels better there than he did with Zemo. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't wanna be hearing those Frank call. Homecoming. Cotis. Frank Chicken. McDonald's. <laughs> I, I know I know you didn't say some of those words, but you know, I always I always like to joke with those words. <laughs> And then of course, you know, his he when he like when he plugged his ears. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. What did you what did you say now? No, Captain Ball. <laughs> Captain America tackles him. Ooh. Like I think you mentioned, he's like a like a pounced him there. Like he pounced him. Yeah, Captain Ball. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and so we never went to Siberia. Well, what was in Siberia? Oh, who knows? Yep. Who knows? And burned a book. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, def definitely check out his name. That was funny. <laughs> so, with that said, that's um, that's that was the Black Panther movie. Definitely, which will definitely get you guys prepared for that sequel coming out. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Well, overall, it's, it's a good movie that never disappoints. It does live up to its time, especially when it comes to the African scenery and all the different types of people from Africa, with with their traditions as well as their as well as the clothes they wear and uh, and the and their and the and the traditions they do. And especially with Wakanda, with all the technology that makes the entire the entire country more advanced than all around all than some parts of the world. Mm. And it would have been it would have been nice if the sequel it would would also been nice if the sequel was, was released on Kwanzaa. Oh, really? oh! I never it, thought that until just it came to me. Hmm. Like the day after Christmas, especially with the whole African theme and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then, yep, because everybody be them holidayed out, and yeah, what better way to start off your Kwanzaa celebration? Than see Wakanda forever. Yeah, and then you come back and do your and do all the all the things that you do for Kwanzaa there. Yeah, it all de it depends on when the day Kwanzaa starts. Like, if Kwanzaa was hits on a Friday, they would have the release date then. Oh, yeah, it'd be the weekend, yeah. Yeah, if Kwanzaa was on a Friday this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad... Yeah, that'd actually be a pretty good idea on there. Yeah. Yeah, but Kwanzaa. And Chadwick Boseman would always be the Black Panther, no matter what. Yeah, and every time Kwanzaa come around, we think about we would think about that Black Panther movie. It's the yeah. Chadwick Boseman. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he was alive during the sequel, it, w it would never disappoint. But it'd be a different storyline. It would. I know it would probably be him and Namor fighting each other, um, and some people. And and no, we haven't. And like I say, we we didn't get no early screening. Yeah. <laughs> but we're just guessing this. Um, and 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 I hadn't even, We hadn't even. Matter of fact, we ain't even looked at no review of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. We, so no, there's no. We we ain't. There are no spoilers from us. Yeah. Um, just a. For what? But what we assume if um, is that probably and probably Namor might not even be the main villain. He might be sort of like what Mabaka was, yeah. sort of maybe like a rival. Um, since you know he's he's over the Atlanteans, so they that might be a rival nation or something like that. And then maybe like somewhere down later in the movie, like you know you, you'll get a you'll get a face off between him and Wakanda. But later in the movie, yeah, it'd be like, so that's what's, so is this what's threatening you guys? Mm. And then, you know, him and, him, him and Shuri and Wakanda, they all have to team up with each other. <laughs> yeah. So I like, so I like in the first movie how uh, the Jabari of the, the Man-Apes tribe teamed up there. Mm. 
Don't you put me to him! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Yeah. But yeah, it might be something like that, and for all we know, could be something completely different. Uh, some people are suspecting that Doom might show up. Uh, Doom? The per- well, see, Doom... Now, I know, first thing you're thinking, like, wait, that's Fantastic Four and stuff, but uh, according to comic books, Doom has some some stuff about him that apparently even um, even the uh, the first Fantastic Four movie that we saw, yeah. which, you know, it's, a, it's an okay film. It's not perfect, but it was enjoyable. The uh, one with Chris Evans in it. Yeah. But that films like that and other films before have not really touched upon, you know, in the live action sense. Yeah. Now, so there's some things about Doom that we have not seen in the in the movie world there. Yeah. Uh, however, even with that, knowing that, yeah, I think that might be a bit far fetched. But if I see if, if Doom pops up in there, I'm probably um, I hope, I, hopefully, I don't have no popcorn in my mouth when he shows it up, because I might accidentally choke. Oof. <laughs> I'm just saying, because I'm not really expecting to see Doom in there. I hear about, I hear people saying that could be the thing, but I'm not really, yeah, and, and maybe, and I think people may be assuming that because Black Panther's first appearance in the Marvel Universe yeah. back in the comic days yeah. was in an issue of the Fantastic Four. It was. Yeah, and then I think it led to his own comic series. Hmm. But he, I think he first, they say he first appeared in a Fantastic Four issue. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Hmm. And so maybe that's why people are suspecting that there. But yeah, I highly doubt that would be the, I highly doubt we, that e- even if you get a team up like Shuri and Namor in the climax, I'm, I highly doubt they're going to be going up against Doom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think Doom is out of character in, in the Black Panther universe. Yeah. But that's some yeah, like I said, but there's some stuff about him that we don't know mm. from the comics and possibly other sources that talking about me and you, even even I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so but I but I still but yeah, but if I see but if but if I see Doom in the movie I'm gonna, well may uh, I might hope there not be nobody else sitting on the other side of me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, spit <Dude>. a, <laughs> or spit a drink at you. Doom! Be like Spongebob and Patrick when they saw a man ring. Man ring! Yeah. Oh boy, they imagine I run out like shit and Scooby. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, like, oh wait, I gotta see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so never know, never know. I don't, I, I, I know it's gonna be. We, we know, we know we're gonna get a good film. Yes. But we don't know. Well, but, but, uh, but there's some things we don't know what we're gonna be going into though. <laughs> yeah. But as long as it's good, that's 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 the only thing that's gonna matter to me. <laughs> as long as it's good, <laughs> yeah. Which I which I know it will be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and I know there's gonna be a memorial for, uh, for Pachala there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they you see in the trailers. Yeah, he got big. I mean, it's like a big billboard size sign with his picture on there. Now it reminds and, me of Tony Stark Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Paying a tribute to him. Yep. <laughs> I think they might be doing. I think he is might, but um, I'm just I'm just saying from my observation. I think Chavez might be bigger. Oh, just saying. <laughs> I know I know Tony was kind of the, well. He was he was I, I am Iron Man. That was the first movie in the MCU. I get it. <laughs> that was a big deal. <laughs> but I but I think Chavez will be bigger yeah. because of the fact that in Tony's case, it's his character that's deceased. Not the actor, mm. but in Chala's case, yeah, they're doing both the uh, the actor and playing it out in the character. Mm. So yeah, it's kind of a bigger impact there. Mm. Just saying, and then plus and then plus the type of movie that it is. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, because the the move the movie itself is a bigger deal than a lot of the other MCU movies. And that's why it's titled Wakanda Forever. Mm-hmm. Because Black Panther kind of the first movie kind of gave us a hint that of you know Wakanda itself as a character. Mm. Yeah, the nation, the place, the mm. the things about it. Yeah. Ev- the whole every everything in in Wakanda itself is it, is a is 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 like pieces of a character. Hmm. So, yeah, this is definitely going to be an interesting sequel. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Say anything else? Then? Well, the, there's more parts of the movie that is the best. Is the soundtrack, especially the music of the, oh, especially yeah. the score and the music itself. Like it has a catchy beat to it, mm-hmm. especially the African sounds and the chant cha cha. Oh yeah, Chachala. Chachala. <laughs> I think you might see more Chachala, the Chachala chant in the sequel when they pay tribute to him. Oh yeah, for his funeral and stuff yeah. there. Yeah. Mm. A different tone. Yeah, had the man to probably have a casket and all that there. Yeah. That's probably that's probably gonna. I, I'm guessing that's probably gonna be the first thing that you'll see when the movie starts. His funeral. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. And I assume that it probably, and like I say, yeah, it's probably going to be like something that happened directly before the movie starts. Yeah. Yeah, like when he was in battle. Like during battle. Mm hmm. Yep. So, they might, um, and whatever it is that they're about to face, um, it could possibly be Namor, I'm not completely sure, or either something that's after. Uh, Wakanda and Atlantis maybe whatever it is that's after both of these nations maybe could be could be they might write it to where that might be what caused Shala's death hmm. yeah I mean sort of similar to what they got um, and I still haven't got around to seeing this but what they had going with Thor Love and Thunder uh, with that guy who's supposed to be the god killer or whatever. Yeah. Uh, by played by Christian Bale. Yeah. Um, maybe there's something sort of like him going around uh, killing nations and stuff like that. Mm. And yeah, he's and now he's arrived at Wakanda and Atlanta. Because, you know, Wakanda's pretty much, you know, mystical Africa. Mm. And you and need I say more with Atlantis. Mm. So yeah, he ob- yeah, obviously uh, Oh yeah, these two kingdoms <laughs> score. <laughs> yeah, you, so yeah, someone would definitely be after these kingdoms there. Yeah. So yes, yeah, definitely interested to see what's gonna be in that movie. Yeah, how that movie's gonna play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like you mentioned before, this is the only. This is the only movie that. Not not only just never disappoints, but also have more respect towards the towards the African community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you mentioned before, like they ne- like the other films from before Black Panther never get that much respect. Right. They'd be okay as far as story wise, but you know, as far you know what they do, entertaining, but it was just it wasn't on that level. Yeah, respect. Right. They they wasn't. I put it this way: the people making those films. Possibly, you know, for what they for what they were trying to do, mm. but the thing, but like I said, they weren't given much to work with. Yeah. So, I mean, you only got so much to work with. There's only so much that you can do, even with a good story. I mean, even you just have to do the best you can. Right. Yeah. You take um, something uh, like like Power Rangers when it first started. You know, mm. I mean, they they were basically going off of you know Saved by the Bell mixed with Japanese footage, mm. and they still are. Uh, well, when they first started, because you know, teens with attitude, but they they kept going with it and evolved it into something. Mm. Yeah, they, they evolved as they went along. Yeah, even even with being a uh, being a budget, uh, the people even grew to like how they had how their style was. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like I say, but um, definitely. Uh, but yeah, definitely a evolution in what we are given to make our good stories. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. 
So it makes me think of what I do with Yamiko. <laughs> and I guess in your case with uh, Coralana, pretty much Yorick Lannis. <laughs> yes. Oh boy, that's that's kind of ironic because Yamiko, like, come Yamiko Coralana. <laughs> <laughs> so we we got nations like the movie does. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's so much to be said, you know. But yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we're gonna we'll cut it. We'll, we'll cut it in, guys. Yeah. If we keep going, we might be like two days later. Yeah, we'll be we'll be late to seeing the sequel. <laughs> Not just late, but we will just fall asleep <clears throat> while the camera's still rolling. Be like be like when I fell asleep. Be like when I was filming me and Tiffany one time back uh, years ago in high school, and yeah, and all of a sudden you just see her all all you see on the camera is just her asleep, yeah, and Adam fell asleep on the couch, yeah, and my and my mom came in because the camera was hooked up to the TV, she came in, yeah. she looked at the TV and and saw and saw her her feet on the camera, <laughs> and, she, and she thought somebody was in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm like what, 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 who, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> hey, it's like yeah, and Tiff, Tiff, like, like, look, get this stuff up and go to bed. <laughs> like, get that stuff and go to bed wow. right now. It's late. <laughs> yeah, I'm fall asleep filming each other. <laughs> Lord, which really she fell asleep before me. <laughs> like there's no saying, there's a time and place for everything. And yes. everything must come to an end. Yeah, I remember I was a camera holic back then too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's it there for what we got there. We're bringing this to an end. Uh, like what you saw, definitely like, share, subscribe. Um, definitely share with your friends. Yeah, y'all definitely want to get uh, get this video before y'all go see what kind of forever. Um, and also buy some of our available comic books and support us on Patreon. Definitely support us there. Definitely would appreciate it. And we will see you in the next video where probably be talking about what we saw with Wakanda Forever. <laughs> so, take care, everybody. Bye, everyone.